Good afternoon. In this video, we're going to talk about if statements. So in this series of videos of statements, they're going to go through two different types of statements. We're going to go into a branch statement and a loop statement. So a branch statement is basically only runs if something is true. A loop statement will continuously run a program if it is true. So we're going to go through branch statements and the first type of branch statement that we use most heavily is going to be the if statement. There are multiple different variations on the if statement so we're going to go through each one of these four which is if, if then, if then else and then also it's not an if statement but it works much like an if statement where it's called select. So if statement will only run a command if it is true. If it's not true, it will bypass the if statement and continue moving on in your code. If it does go into the if statement, so the condition statement, if it is true, then it moves to whatever it needs to do, whether it's a jump or a call or a protocol that you set up. And as soon as that, that is executed, then it moves on into your program. That's where it kind of differs from looping system. So basic premise on if statements, you're going to have if a register or robot input, so you can have multiple different things you could put in here. So if a item is greater than equal to equal to not equal to that is the operator a value and that value can be another register or it can be a constant input of say like two three or whatever you want and then you're going to have the action that happens and in a basic if statement the two actions that can happen is going to be your jump or call program so let's program a couple different variations on the traditional if statement so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a digital input so right now i have a digital input number one set to a start button so that could be a PLC that is coming into our actual robot that we're sensing I did switch it to simulate so that we can turn it on and off on the actual program here so I can turn it on so if I go over on off on off and that only works if you're in simulation mode for digital input I also while I'm here I have also a digital output of a green light and also an error light so that can be a yellow light or red light or however your company wants to set things up so the first if variation is we're going to wait for a start button to happen and then as soon as that start button happens it's going to run the program so we're going to go to new instruction and here's if select we're going to just do an if statement equal to so if our digital input number one equal to on then we can do a couple different things we can jump to a different area in this program or we can call another program so this is could be a secondary program where we write this and then we can create a program where we're running all different shapes or whatever we're doing in a different program and we can use this and use it as a call button or running simultaneously which we'll talk about a little later so if our digital input on we're going to jump to label we'll say two we don't want anything to happen until this is actually running or until this is on so i'm going to go to the end here move up and I'm going to insert one line and then we're going to put a label up here and again a label is something in which a jump will go to so if you notice how it says jump to label two anything that is labeled as number two it will actually jump to so I'm going to go new instruction jump label and I'm going to call this label one then at the end here I'm going to go new instruction I'm going to jump to label one so basically what I did is I created a loop. So it's looping, 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 looping over and over again until digital one becomes on. Because remember that if if is not true, it skips it. As soon as the if statement becomes true, then it goes into that if statement and it jumps to label two in which we'll put down here somewhere. So I just go ECDM and I'm going to insert a couple lines say maybe like 10 and then I'm going to just put my uh, label 2 here so as soon as this becomes on it jumps to label 2 now here's a problem with having a digital input 
being read. So basically, when a robot runs a line of code, it is literally running it in millionths of a second. So basically, what you're doing is millionths of a second, millionths of it's constantly doing this, and you can eat up valuable CPU time, and you can actually overload CPU of your robot. So generally, if you're going to wait for a digital input or wait for a signal, you want to put a wait command in here of a few milliseconds so that you're not eating up processor time. So I'm going to just go in here, insert, I'm going to insert one line, and I'm going to just do a very quick wait. So I'm going to go wait, wait in seconds, and I'm going to wait maybe a tenth of a second. Okay, so that just takes weight off of that processor, so it's not overloading. So it's going to check to see if this digital input is on every tenth of a second. So tenth of a second, tenth of a second, as soon as it reads it, and then it jumps to label two, and then we can move through our process. So in here we'll say we'll call uh, our square program. Use a call button, so I'm gonna go new instruction and call. So now I'm gonna bring in a program, making it a sub-program. So I'm gonna go call program, and I'm gonna do square one, so it's going to do the square forward and then backwards. Uh, we created this program a couple videos ago. And then what happens after this runs, and now it goes through all these blank lines, which it skips, and then goes to the end. So let's try this out. Let's run this. I'm also going to bring up the digital input face on here. So I'm going to go Shift Display. I'm going to go Double. And inside this display, I'm going to bring in my ins and outs. And then I'm going to switch to my in. There's my digital in, so I can switch it on and off. So what I'm going to do is run the program. Notice how it's constantly jumping back here. It looks like nothing's happening, but a tenth of a second means it's just jumping, 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 jumping over and over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this from on to off, and then you'll see the actual call square one. There we go. So now we're calling square one. Now we have an on and off button for our object. So the next way we're going to do is we're going to have another digital input of on, but instead of jumping to a label, we're going to call an actual program. So right now we have our digital input here, waiting until we jump to here, and we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to do an if statement. So we're going to go if select equal, and we're going to do our digital input of number two, and we're going to make that on. And then if that happens, we're going to call program, and we're going to call program square one, so the one we used before. Um, once again, we're going to make a little wait here just because we don't want to continuously run this over and over again, eating up processor time. And let's have this wait for 10 seconds. So if nobody presses digital input number two within 10 seconds, then it's going to jump out of this system. So let's first add a wait command. So let's go wait, and we're going to go a half of a second, and then we're going to add one to our register. So we're going to go registers, and we're going to go register number two is equal to register number two, a constant number of, we'll say, 0.5, because we're matching the wait command. So then it's adding a half of a second to our register, and then we're going to new instruction if if register number two is equal to 10 then we're going to jump out of this loop and we'll loop it back up so it's going to constantly loop up to the top there if both of these commands are not met so we're checking to see if we press number two if we do we call the square program we're waiting and then we're adding a half a second to the register if that is number 10, which so half, one, two, three, and so on, if it's equal to 10, then we're going to jump to label one, which we're going to redo everything. We're going to go now, we're going to constantly check this every half second, so we need to do a jump label here. Two. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. I'm gonna put my second screen up here. So shift display, double. So here's my program, so here's my digital in. So we're going to do a second start here. Let's add, call it start number two. All right, so we're going to turn that on to simulate. So we can simulate both of them. And let's run the program. 
run. So again, it's waiting, waiting, waiting here until I press the on off button here. So as soon as I jump there, it jumps here, it's waiting for that half a second. And if it's past that 10 seconds, it will move back up to label number one up here. All right, so when we go down here, it was counting over. So what I did is I changed the R2, which is greater than equal to. So before it was equal to uh, 10, but as soon as we go over 10, let's go greater than equal to. So if it accidentally jumps over this too quickly, then we won't have a problem. So let's go greater than equal to. And then as soon as it jumps up here, we want to reset the register. So I'm going to go inside this and I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to paste it inside here. It's going to be constantly clearing the register number two because we're not using it until we get down to here. So let's run this and see if everything is working the way it's supposed to. So it's waiting up here, waiting, waiting, waiting. I'm going to go up here and off. And then you'll see it actually go back up here and wait until it sets uh, back to on. There we go. So it's waiting up there. Let's go on and then let's go on again and then it should run the program. Here we go. All right, so that is the first version of the if statement. Let's go to the other versions. So then there is the if then statement. So this gives you a little bit more versatility with actually programming a set of commands that is going to happen if that is actually going to be true. So basically, if the statement is true, it runs a certain line of code. And then at the end, we have to do tell the computer that this is the end of the if statement, and then it will continue on with the normal program itself. So here are the different operations. You have the if operator, you have a register or robot input, then you have the actual operator, which is your Boolean logic, and then you have the value, which is going to be, what is it going to be greater than or equal to? It could be a register or a constant input. Then you have the word then. You have the actions, which is going to be the commands that you want to run. And then at the end of those commands where you want to end the if statement, it will be the end if. So if you're actually a computer programmer, this is where you have your curly brackets and then your end curly brackets. So I created a new program. I call the if then statement. So the first thing I do is I'm going to set up a register. So we just have register number two again, which is my counter. And then we're going to make a constant zero. So we're going to start at zero. So basically the premise is we're going to have an if statement. If we press, say, a button, then it's going to run a few commands. And we're going to have it actually sketch out this square as an actual command, not calling the actual program. So I'm going to go a few lines here. So I'm going to just put in like 10, 10 different lines. First, we're going to do a loop statement. So let's go to jump label label number one and then we're going to do our if statement so we're going to go new instruction if select and then we're going to go if then so here's our if then so we're going to say if our digital one insert is equal to on so you have to use that insert, and that's where people kind of get confused with using these type of statements because you have to add on, whereas the other if statement that we worked with before, those were actually already part of that if statement. So you actually have to build the if statement by using the insert command here. So if digital one is on, then, and then here's going to be our line of executed codes. So we're going to sketch out these registers or our square which I actually have set up as registers already so if I go to data and I go to type position register I start with position register number 10 here so I'm going to go back to my program and I'm going to go new instruction we're going to joint down or joint movement down to that so I have move point joint down we're going to use position register number 10 which is going to be our point one and then we're going to linear to each of the other ones. Linear, and then we we'll add move point to linear. So this is going to be position register number 11. 
This is going to be position register number 12. And then just go back to data, move on down. So square one, square two, and we need to go up to position register number 13. At move point, linear, at move point, linear, and we're going to use the position register 13, and then we need to go back to number 10, position register number 10. There we go. So now we're running the squares. We're going to come down to the first part. We're going to go up, over, down, and then back to the beginning. And then we will go probably most likely to the home uh, view. But then here's the if statement. So if digital one is on, then we're going to run these lines of code. And then we need to tell the computer to end the if statement. So we're going to go new instruction, if select, over, and we're going to go end if. Now because we're going to constantly wait for that digital on, so digital on, we're going to add a wait command here. And I'm going to wait maybe every half of a second for that button so we're not eating up precious CPU power. Um, and then we're going to go new instruction and we're going to go to jump jump to label one now right now we don't have any home position so let's add a home position right after label one so it's going to constantly want to be at home position until we press this button so we insert a single line and we're going to go add move point and we're going to go joint movement and my home position is position register number one there we go so now what it's doing is first it's resetting our register number two just in case we're going to use it later and then we're going to go past label one because it's bypassing it right now going to go to the home position then it's going to constantly wait for digital in number one to be on so if it's digital in on then it runs line six through ten and then it waits a half a second and then jumps back so it's going to constantly wait for this to run and then this screen, I'm going to have my ins and outs. And I'm going to turn both of these off. And let's run this program. It's going to constantly loop. So it's at its home position. So it's not going to move anymore. It's waiting, waiting, waiting until we press the start button. As soon as we press the start button, it goes into the if statement. So it's moving into the if statement, running the line of code inside that if statement. Go out. And then home so it's going to constantly run this because the digital start button is on so if I press off here you'll see that then it will stop at the home position and then wait for that position to be on again so as soon as I turn on again then it moves down and it runs that line of code So that is the if then statement. So it's much like the if statement, but you're now allowed to add lines of code in between the then and then end if. The third modification of the if then statement is going to be the if then else. So basically it's just adding on to the if then statement, but if the inside the if statement is true, you can have another element inside that that will run if certain elements is not true. Okay, so you would have your conditional statement. If it's true, then it'll run it. If it's not true, then it runs something else. So one or the other is going to be constantly running. So here's the basic premise. You have the if, your register or robot input. You have your logic, your Boolean logic. If then is greater than, equal to, not equal to, so on, so on, so on. A certain value, whether that's a register or a constant input. You have your then, which again, this is exactly the same thing as before. You have your action, which is your coding, and then your else will run if this action is not true. So let's build upon this now. So I'm going to go inside here and we turn on my teach pendant. So now we're going to utilize this register number two, and we're going to have this run if register number two is less than three times. So we're going to have this run three times if the digital input is on. So I'm going to go down to the end if, and we insert a few different lines. So I'm going to insert four to start with. And we're going to insert our else statement here. So I'm going to go inside here, and I'm going to go instruction, and we're going to do our if select, 
and we're going to go to next page and else. So here's our else statement. And I'm going to just turn off this. We'll go shift display, single, makes programming a little bit easier. Let's go into new instruction. Let's go to call and then end. So we're going to end this program if the parameters are not met. So you notice how we have an end and an end here. So this is another way to end a program in the middle of the program without making a bunch of jump statement. Let's add on to our digital input here. So we arrow over to the actual parentheses and then you go insert and this is what pops up. So if you go to the actual end right there, you go insert and then your three lines pop up. We're going to do an and statement. So we're going to go and our register number two is insert less than we'll say four so we'll do a constant number of four so that means it'll run up until four so as long as our digital on is on and our register is less than four then we're going to run this program if either one of these is not true it's going to end this program so when we come up here and let's go a counting here let's register so we go ECDM and we insert one line and now we need to do our counter for the register so register plus register number two is equal to register number two plus one then it'll be the else statement so then I'm going to go in here and we delete these lines oops not insert but delete and wait and then jumps to our label one so it's run constantly running through here so let's run this program so i just kicked up the speed a little bit so it runs through a little bit faster so again just the premise is it's going to reset register number two to zero here's our jump label so it jumps past that make sure it's at home if our digital on or these two items if either of these are off it will actually end the program. So if I go to my ins and outs and I turn this to off, you'll notice that as soon as we go into the program and we run it, it will go through and then it ends the program because it is, this is not true. And in an and statement, both of these need to be true in order for this to work. If it doesn't work, it goes into the else statement in which it ends the program. So now I'm going to go to IO and I'm going to turn this on. So start button is on, go back to my program, and then I'm going to run this and you'll see it run our program. And then at any point, if I turn this to off, it'll actually stop the program. So I'm going to run this one more time, and I'm going to turn off the program in between here. So in and out, and when I go off, notice how it ends the program. Now this ends the program after it does a complete run around through the square. So if I turn this back on, and I run this again, runs on, and then if I turn it off, it'll stop after this motion. So home and then turns off because both of those are not running. Okay, so that's a way to abort a certain item after it may have done one pass. So it goes back to home position. So you know that it's at home position or so on. So that is going to be your if, else, and then then statements. So the last of the if type statements are going to be your select statement. So the select statement, it's going to look at a certain item and based on that certain item or case it's called, it's going to run that line of code. So if I say if register number one is equal to one, it's going to run case number one. If it's equal to two, it's going to run case number two. So if you have multiple programs that need to happen simultaneously after each other, a select statement works very well. So inside our select statement, you're going to have the select condition statement. You're going to have a register or robot input. You're going to have your operator. So equal to, less than, equal to, or not equal to, and then your value, and then your action that happens after that. So whether it's a call another program or to jump 
to a certain portion in your code. And then you can add on actions after that. So that's what this button is for. And then the last one is going to be the else. So what happens if any of these other items are not true? So this is where you can add an end statement or jump statement to something else where it ends the program. So let's go through this line of code for the select. So the first thing I did is I added a about 10 to 11 lines and then I have register 1 equal to 0. Actually let's go register 2 since I have that as my counter. Okay, so inside my counter then I'm going to go in here about one line over and we're going to go new instruction and we're going to add a label label number one because we're going to constantly loop through three scenarios. We're going to loop through the circle, square, and then triangle programs. So we're going to go label number one, and then we're going to go number four, line number four, and we're going to go to select, go arrow over to select, and we're going to use register number two. If that is equal to the first number, which is zero, then we're going to call program and we're going to call the circle program. So there's my circle program. And then we're going to start going through. So I'm going to go new instruction, if select, over. And then we're going to go select equal to. So we're adding on to this select statement. So if register number two is equal to one, then we're going to call program, we'll say square. Then select, over, select equal to. If register number two is equal to two, so constant number of two, then we're going to call program triangle. Then we're going to do the else statement. So we're going to go add new instruction, if select, and then we're going to do the else statement. And the else statement is going to jump to label, we'll say two. Okay, so we're going to jump out of this and we're going to move on to a next label. So this works just like an if statement. So if register number two is equal to zero, it's going to do the circle program and then it's going to exit the select icon. And then here's where we're going to add one to our register. So register number two is equal to register number two plus a constant of one. And then we're going to jump back up to label one. So we go new instruction, jump label to number one. And then down here, we're going to end the program by going from label two down to here. So we're going new instruction and we're going to go label and label two. So that ends our program. So once again, zero skips, runs the circle. Once the circle is done, then it adds one to that register jumps back up to here and then now it's at one so now it calls square number one runs it adds one to our register jumps back up does the triangle jumps back up and then it jumps to label number two after that and then it ends our program so let's try this out and run so here's our circle program notice how it brings up the circle program when it's on your screen triangle and then it ends the program so now the program's ended because it the register number two which is at three because now it's at the else statement so if I actually go to the data and look at my register it should be at three now if at any point you go inside this program so if I run this and you go oh something's wrong and I stop this so if I stop Notice how I'm still in the circle program. Now if I go into the other program, it'll still be inside here. So if you're inside a program that's a sub-program of a program, go to function, abort all. Once you abort all, then you just go back to select, and then go into the program that you have, and then you'll see the actual program. So we did this select program as a call, but you can also do a jump label. So if it's one, jump to label two. If it's two, jump to label two. If it's three, jump to label three. So you can have multiple different programs running inside there if you do not want to call a certain program on the outside. So just like we did with the first initial if statement, we did either a call or a jump. We can do the same thing for the select program as well.